joining us today for this Thursday afternoon Apex webinar. Um, how are we liking the oscillation detector so far? We released it to you Monday. Uh, you were able to kind of play with it Tuesday, Wednesday, and today a little bit. Give me a little feedback in here. How, how you liking it? How you feeling about it? Has it been helpful at all? Is it confusing? Give me a little feedback here. All right, people are saying they love it, it's fantastic, great indicator, very helpful, it's awesome, very helpful, love the alerts. Jeff, somewhat helpful, okay. Um, John, performance had declined, okay. We'll, we'll kind of go over some, of the, some things today. I'm all ears. Okay, good, good. All right, well, what we're gonna do here is, um, like I said, I'm, I'm glad you guys are using it, being able to play with it, and we're gonna go over a little bit of advanced training today. I wanna kinda of recover a few things um, that have some things we've gotten some questions on and some things that I think have been a little bit, a few misconceptions. So I wanna do a little bit of brief overview to cover certain basics to make sure you got it. I wanna show you a few different things on your chart and then we're gonna walk through three or four examples that you know can help you. Cause I'm, I'm seeing some people say, hey, well my, I've actually not done as great since I've adopted it, but I see a lot of people saying, oh, it's great, especially when VAT is tight or it keeps me out of trouble. Let's address a few of those things. Make sure we've got certain foundations down, and then we're going to jump into some chart examples of, okay, what would I do here? You know, what what would I not take or take here? What would I look at? Because I think that's where you've had a few days to look at it. You're seeing some great things about it, but then you're finding some of those trades where you're like, ooh, okay, what do I do? because normally I wouldn't have taken that trade, but should I? Or normally I would take that trade, but I didn't. And we're gonna try to help clarify that a little bit more today, and then we'll keep going with it as well. It's not that you just get a release and then one advanced training and you're on your own. You know it's not like that at Apex. We just keep going here, okay? So, um, oscillation detector. Um, if you were with us Monday on the release or you've seen the video, all it is, is just a different way to see the trend volume. It just, it measures the volume trend in a little bit different way than VAD does, okay? And we do have the audio alerts, which VAD doesn't have, which is nice. Uh, first thing I have to say is this, okay? I know that in the power play training, everything is all about VAD. VAD has to do this or VAD has to do that, right? Okay? VAD's got to be this, or VAD's got to be growing, or VAD's got to be less. What is something that you hear me talk about all the time of the ABCs and the one, two, threes? Does everybody understand what I mean when I say that? Okay. For example, one, two, three is, well, what are the rules? Well, it's got to be a level, one, got to be chop, two, got to have a cluster, three, and then VAD, four. So maybe I should say one, two, three, four instead of one, two, three, okay? So those are the rules, right? Just like imagine some other random system you were trading that had indicators on it. And the rules were this indicator has to turn green, this indicator has to turn green, and this one has to turn green, and this one has to cross over. Then you enter to, to buy, right? We've all seen those systems. We've all traded those systems, correct? One, two, three, like here's the rules. This indicator, that indicator, you get an arrow. That's the rule, right? But when you've traded those systems in the past and there's just some random indicators, okay? I mean, you know, for example, I mean, look, look at this chart here, Apex. I'm not dogging indicators. We have tons of indicators. We love them, right? But how many times have, especially when you're new or ah, I just traded some indicator because this turned green and there was an arrow and they said, that's where you buy. So I would buy. And you had the rules down, the one, two, three, four. But half the time, those other systems, whether that you're with Apex or even not with Apex, some other company, some indicator you bought, all you knew is you were supposed to buy or sell when that was green or that was an arrow. But you, but you didn't know why necessarily, right? You didn't always know, well, why does that indicator work that way? You didn't care about the programming right? You didn't want to know the algorithm and how does this program, 
you don't care about that tech side, but you didn't necessarily know why you were supposed to buy there, right? And there were certain times where you would just follow those one, two, three rules and you would buy when something turned green and an arrow showed up. And sometimes you would win and have a profitable trade and make money, right? And then other times it would just be choppy or it would be wrong direction or, you know, and you come break even or you end up down a little bit. There was nothing else behind it. So that's what I mean by the one, two, threes. Like, you know, the rules of entering when this, this and this happens. But then you step back and look outside the box and look at the whole market and say, OK, well, why was there an entry there? Or why was that a bad entry? You know, when you start digging in deeper and you're looking at levels, OK, I'm not just taking arrows anywhere for any arrow reason. Guys, indicators are great. We love indicators. But have you ever heard people say, well, indicators are late. Indicators are great, but indicators are late. That's a 110% true statement for the most part. Because why? All an indicator is is an algorithm. It's a program that says, look back at the last X number of bars. And at the last X number of bars have done this or that or that compared to the previous X number of bars, then make a green or red arrow plot there. Uh, indicators don't read the market. Indicators are not traders. Indicators don't know what's going on in the market. Indicators are a, a algorithm. They're a computer program. All they know to do is if the past X bars have done something, then plot this. Right. So for something to plot you an up arrow, hey, the market's going up. It's because the market's already been going up compared to what it did before or what it might do. Does that make sense? OK. So when you step back and look at the ABCs of what's the market doing, what are the important levels? OK. Is the market trending or is it chopping? All right. That's where it, certain indicators are great, like that bar timer, right? Okay. What's going on in the market? What's happening inside that bar? What's the heartbeat of the market? Where are the orders coming in? Where are the orders going out? Where's the momentum? Where's the exhaustion? Where's the absorption? Like order prints tells us that, right? And that's kind of a, you know, real time or the closest to a real time type indicator we see is what, you know, inside of order prints, seeing what's going on, you know, and then volume of what's behind that. You know, we talked about that a lot, right? With, hey, we love our diagnostic bars. They're great. But without order prints, we don't know what's going on in this bar. We don't know that there was a cluster there. So that might be the last one. We don't know that there's exhaustion there. So we're seeing deeper inside and we're looking at these levels, we're looking at order prints, we're looking at, you know, certain volume being exhausted to see the heartbeat of the market. And then it is nice to have certain indicators that might help us confirm what we're seeing, but we, we know why to take a trade or not. Think about it like this. Think back to before you were with Apex or even some of the old Apex systems where you were just taking every single trade that showed up on red or green indicator. Sometimes you had great days, sometimes you had bad days, right? How many of you on this webinar used to trade IZSS with Apex? Show of hands, the IZSS system. Cool system, right? Use these institutional zone levels. We wait for all these indicators to line up and turn green or red, and then we go. And it was great, right? Because you understood, hey, it's coming down here, and we're looking at, you know, a short-term indicator combined with a long-term indicator combined with a come all these things combined to help you visually see it, right? 
what was one of the downsides that would happen to you on IZSS? Okay, or Aaron says, I used to trade the original trend catcher, right? That was a great system, Aaron, right? And when it worked, it worked great. But then sometimes it was just, you were taking every little turn, right? When you're just taking some random indicator, you got chopped up. So think back to those two Apex systems, okay? Or if you've been with another company or education company or traded some other non-Apex system where all you did was take those, you know, red, green arrows, right? Well, and that didn't work out for you because you got some good trades, but then you got all those bad ones too, right? Because you were blindly just taking arrows. Think now, just after three weeks in open house, if you could go back to one of these old systems and know what you know now about the power of levels and you're only taking trades at levels, if you knew about understanding and reading volume and you understood what that extra volume meant or you understood what, you know, you really had a clear, good picture of um, divergence, right? And if you had order prints in there to give you what it's giving you and clusters, like if you could take those market concepts that you understand now by learning power play and could have used those to filter your trades on these other systems you've traded, can you not see how that would have probably made some of these other systems like a hundred times better and how you would have stayed out of a lot of those trades and not just taking every single red or green arrow because you, 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 and notice this is not a sales webinar. I'm not selling you on apex. I'm selling you on the fact that you're seeing more than just a red green indicator. You guys are actually learning to read the market and read chop and, and things like that, right? Does that make sense what I'm trying to get across to you here, whether it was an old Apex system or any other system you've traded? If you knew what you know, knew now about reading what's going on in the market, bar timer, chop, you know, uh, volume, okay? And so that's what I mean when I talk about the ABCs versus the one, two, threes, where you need to know both of them, okay? So, Yes, the one, two, threes, or technically one, two, three, four of the power plays is level, chop, cluster, and VAD, okay? So, but I don't want you to get caught up in these two misconceptions, because we've had them a lot the last three days. The oscillation detector is not replacing VAD. Oscillation detector is not better than VAD. VAD is not better than oscillation detector. I don't want you getting so caught up on the one, two, three, four of, well, VAD has to do this. So if the oscillator tells me something different, then oh well, because the rule, the video said VAD. What is it we're trying to sh teach you there to look for? Are we trying to get you to focus on the one, two, three, four, four, and it has to be apex VAD? with this color or are you looking to look inside the market because you're not trying to make everything work around VAD right even though that's the rule one two three four you're trying to get the prop proper view of the volume or the divergence in the market D does that make sense so this, I'm trying to say this right, giving you oscillation detector doesn't change the rules. It's just another tool combined with VAD to search for the same rule. The rule is not VAD. The rule is the difference in volume or the exhaustion, the divergence. Does that make sense? Am I saying this properly? Am I getting it across to you? Okay.
It's just another confirmation to go in or to stay out and to make sure that you have the right market setup. It's not about VAD. It's about the volume and strength of the market. And it's just another way to see it, okay? So I've seen some of you guys just not even looking at VAD. You're only looking at oscillation detector, okay? I've seen some of you guys only looking at one, not looking at the other. You need to look at both. Get that overall picture, okay? It's like you looking at, you know, um, I mean, it, did I get my point across here? Okay. Watch both. Get the whole picture. It's like saying, well, I'm only going to watch this chart and not an order prints chart. Or I'm only going to watch order prints, but I'm not going to look at everything else. you got to, it's just a, another tool to see the whole picture, right? And see exactly what's going on. So, I just want to clarify that. We're not changing the rules. It's still the same point of what you're looking for in the market. Okay? And what we talked about before was hopefully they agree. Right? Hopefully, hey, they both agree. Great. Okay? If they don't agree and you can clearly see why they don't agree, great. Then you... Still take it, right? But if it's not clear why they don't agree, then stay away. That's one of the, uh, that's just as powerful as it agreeing with VAD is when they don't agree and you can't clearly see why. That's kind of a, man, I'm going to stay away here. Okay? Like a, uh, doesn't quite make sense. So I'm staying clear. All right? And we've talked a little bit about that in the training. For any of you guys that haven't seen the training, you can go back here under webinars, open house webinars, and you can watch the webinar. Also, you can go right back here to the forum post, okay? And when you get into the forum, you go down to the S6, section six, which is the apex indicators, all right? And right here, oscillation detector. And it's all right here, okay? Got some great information about it, walks you through everything. And a couple of great examples here that I just want to review real quick. All right, this one right here. Here's a perfect time where it helps you to see. How many times have you seen this where you're looking at VAD and the VAD is just so small, right? I mean, these big VADs are easy to read, right? It's really easy to see that this to this, big difference. But when you've got this and that little one and the, it's like, Okay, well, was VAD about the same there, or was it slightly more? What? Well, that's when you can see here. This push-up was 923. This one, 1330. Okay, I can see that it was more. Here, I, I can't really tell if it was a clear, distinct difference, right? Okay. Johnny, you said, you yeah, all at night, especially some of you nighttime traders where there might not be as high a volume on certain things. The oscillation detector might help make that a lot more clear, okay? Now, um, keep in mind, I just want to, because we covered this, but we've gotten several questions, okay? Um, the difference, the difference here, okay? Just a, one more time. What are these lines? These lines are showing you where the measurement starts and ends. The oscillation detector, okay, measures from right here, okay, this low all the way up to this high. It measures from low to high and high to low, and that's the measurement that is giving this number of volume, okay. VAD and, and oscillation detector does not reset with one bar elevators. See it? It's showing this whole thing is one trend and giving you a number. VAD is specifically designed to read a certain way where every up close bar, you're going to have a green VAD. Every down close bar, you're going to have a white VAD or whatever color you use. And then the next up close bar, it's going to start over. Okay? It resets. 
And there's reasons behind that and things that you can see with that. All right, and VAD reads from reach to the bar close. All right, from the open and the close there, not from the high to the low. So, for example, this down close bar right here, you see this? VAD's going to put the volume in this bar, okay, where? All the volume in this bar, VAD's going to show it because the bar closes down, right? So it's going to show as a down close bar. So VAD is going to put all of this in the down close VAD, the volume from this bar here, right, from the bar itself as we're opposed to oscillation detectors measuring from here all the way up to here, meaning when this new bar opened, this volume that went up, right? Does that make sense? When this up close bar closed, the market came over here and started this bar and went up. So VAD is considering the volumes in that wick, as it were, as part of the up move. Uh, oscillation detector is. Okay, as to where VAD is counting the volume of this bar as a down move. Does that make sense? So that is another area where the numbers can conflict a little bit because of that measurement. The other area where it conflicts is because oscillation detector measures this whole thing, even this down close elevator bar as to where VAD resets. Okay, make sense? So, once again, what, here's an example right in front of us. What does this look like? It looks like a push up, right? And we see VAD. Can, it, can everybody clearly see this? Okay. The market pushes up and we see our VAD, right? Okay, let, let me back up. I'm sorry. Look at this push up right here. Got a push up in the market. What did VAD do? It pushed up to right here, right? Then what do we have here? A, a little, a push up a little bit higher. We've got VAD right there. Then right here, it pushes up even higher. And what does it look like right here? Looks like VAD went where? Higher high on what? Lower volume is what that looks like. Correct? Everybody agree? It made a higher high on lower volume compared to here and to here. Okay? So, you might be thinking, oh, look, that's a number one setup. The market went higher on lower volume. And it's not really, you know, super trending. It's kind of in a, you know, wavy trend here. And, okay, I might would take that as a number one. Well, a couple things. You've got a good move up and a pullback and up. So you might be like, well, I don't know. But look at what really happened. When, so, so what if you had taken that down as a number one and then you just, you get into chop here? See it? That was today. See that? Did anybody take that as a number one and get stopped out really quick? Today. Okay. So, but let's take a step back and look. Because it looks like higher high on lower volume. But what does this push up say in the OD, oscillation detector, 57.11 for here to here, right? Okay, cool. Um, Marion, I can't click on that in GoToWebinar. Send me that in Skype, please, ma'am. Um, so 57.11, right? But then what does it show for this move up? Oh. 76.92. So it actually shows more volume in OD, doesn't it? 
as to where in in VAD it looks like it went higher on less volume. Does everybody see that difference there? Can everybody see what I mean here very clearly? Okay, so OD and VAD disagree. So when they disagree, we want to look and say, okay, can I see why they disagree? All right, well, can we clearly see why they disagree here? What do we know that VAD does? VAD is building, building, and building, 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 and building. And then the one down close bar, VAD puts that into a down close bar. And when this next bar closes up, it resets and keeps going. So we know that happens, right? We know that oscillation detector doesn't take into account for one bar elevators. So in this case, we can clearly see why they're different. And in the spirit of a number one power play setup, what are we, what's the spirit of what we're looking for? Is it all about the one, two, three, four, and well, VAD was less, it was higher, let's go. Or is it, no, what I'm wanting to see is that the market tried to go higher, it even pushed a little further up, gave it its last little bit, and it didn't even have, a, it, it did not even have as much volume as the last time it's done. It's exhausted, right? We're, we're, we're looking for it to run out of steam. Okay. Is that what it did here? Did it go a little higher and run out of steam? Or overall, did it go higher with technically more steam? D does that make sense? If I need to repeat that, please tell me. Because that's the key here of how to utilize both of these together. Okay? When they don't match, look why. Okay? And that is why, in general, when we're looking at the market going, you know, to be a proper number one setup, for the market to go a little further than here on less overall volume and what we see here is that's not the case okay does that make sense does everybody understand the point I'm trying to make there okay and how you would look and say okay I see why they're different VAD looks like it went higher on less volume but I'm not worried about just the indicator I'm worried about the the, the ABC of I want a market to go a little higher on less steam, and that's not the case there, okay? Right? Now, I'm not saying that's even the perfect number one setup anyway due to that elevator, but, you know, it is not. It is a kind of ranging market. But if you didn't look at that and you took this down, you would have gotten chopped, okay? Does that make sense? So that's just one example there, okay? Now, um, let's go back through this third example because this was a really kind of aha moment for a lot of people because it was the same kind of example that I just showed you there. All right, what do we have here? Well, the market came up here, pulled back, had a couple little choppy bars, comes up, does a one bar elevator. So as VAD's building, we got a down close bar, VAD puts it where? In the down close bar. Then it rebuilds. So if we're just looking at VAD, we think it didn't go as high on less volume. This is not a trade setup in any way, right? Because for a number two, we want it to go more volume but not quite as high. VAD didn't show that. But 
OD shows more volume. OD shows this as a valid number two. Okay, they're different. Can I look and see why? Yes, because VAD took that into account. I can see why it's different. So there was more volume here. There was a push to try to go up. It couldn't do it. So I can get 20 ticks on the way down on a valid, you know, P2, PP2. Okay. So that's where, you know, there's a lot of times you'll see them confirming and you're great. There's times where, okay, they're different. Why? Okay. That elevator makes sense. When you look at them and it's like, okay, they're different, but I can't clearly see why. It must be that they're different because of the volume in these wicks that's calculating different. And I can't clearly see it's due to an elevator. It's not clear. I'm going to stay clear. Okay. That, does that make sense? Everybody understand that when you can't see why. Okay. All right. So can't stay clear, stay clear. Um, so once again, you can use the indicator a couple different ways. I just want to recover this real quick and we'll move on. And I need to show you a couple new things here. All right. So if you're using whatever chart, you know, if you've got your own chart, your own little template or whatever, um, and you have your chart open and you want to add the oscillation detector to it, okay? All you gotta do is right click on your chart, go to indicators, go to oscillation detector right here, okay? To add it to your chart, all right? And it'll go right on your chart there, okay? So, you know, whatever other charts you have, you can add it on. Now, we talked about this, one of the super, super helpful things, and I find personally one of the, you know, really big helpful things is the audio alerts for the double tops and double bottoms. Again, the double tops and double bottoms, when the market comes into that range, they'll paint, the numbers will start to paint the yellow color, and you'll get an audio alert that says double top or double bottom. And I'll, and I showed you a couple examples, and I'm sure you've seen this live. Have you guys seen it live where there's times you'll get that double top or double bottom alert before you get the cluster audio alert sometimes? Yeah, and it's really helpful to get a heads up quicker. I mean, the cluster is already great to give you that alert. To, hey, let me pull up that chart, really look and pay attention to it and check levels. But sometimes you'll get that, oftentimes you'll get that, double top or bottom audio alert first, and it gives you even more time to really look at them, okay? So if you're just adding on the um, indicator to another chart, right here under number four alerts, the indicator itself is defaulted to false on everything. So if you wanna turn on the audio alerts, you would set that to true, and you'd also set filter alerts to true, and you'll now get audio alerts, okay? Now, some people say, what is this enable visual? It, it's already visual. I can see it. Well, what that's talking about is visual alerts. Okay. Some of you are like, well, what do you mean visual alerts? I've never heard of that. Okay. Well, let me show you right there. Visual alerts. See that? Volume cluster, double top. Pretty much any of the indicators that have audio alerts also have visual alerts that you can turn on. Oh, I didn't know about that. Very simple. All you do is just like you're opening a new chart. So right here on Ninja, okay, you go to File, New, and instead of going New Chart, what do you do? Right there, New Alerts, and it will pull up. Oh, hold on, let me do it. New alert. It opens you up one of those alert windows. And you'll start seeing the alerts on here for anything that you have on. Okay? So for any of you that might like that or find that useful, you can do that. Sometimes people say, well, there's certain audio alerts I want, like clusters and, you know, 
double tops. I don't want alerts on the Apex E's and on MVP and Trend Catcher or any of that, but I want to be able to see an alert. So I don't want the audio going off because I don't want so much going off in my ear, but I like having all those other things on a window alert so that I can see it pop up and be aware of them. Does that make sense? Now some of you might want that. Okay, because what this does is, let's say that I had five charts open. It'll put the alerts from all five charts on this same window. It'll say NQ has this or YM has this. So it's kind of a nice, you know, um, other way to kind of monitor multiple charts visually to see that there's something going on. Okay. Yeah, Johnny, I believe you can go in there and program that as well. Okay. All right. So first, just want to show you that a few of you guys have asked about that. Now, as far as the template itself, again, you can go to new chart and open up a market here. Okay. And the same chart you guys have all been using, the C's OP. You can just click right there. C's OP with OD. It's already added on. Okay. And on the template, you don't need to mess with the colors, with the settings, with everything is good there. Okay. It's all there for you. Now, if you go into the template and you go into the indicator, you see that it's the regular power play template you have, but it's, it's on there. All right. You go into the oscillation detector. Notice everything is already defaulted to true on the alerts in your template. It's not on the indicator by itself but on the template it is, okay? One other question I've gotten quite a bit. You've got a, quite a bit of stuff on this chart. Sometimes you'll have that right there. You see that? Hey, the numbers, are, like my apex pattern is covering the numbers. Or hey, some other indicator I have is covering the numbers. What can I do about it? Okay, let me just show you real quick. Where is this right here, right now? It's right there, right? See that number, 4365, everybody see that? Okay, let's go to the indicator. All right, right click, indicators, find it right here, oscillation detector. Do you see this right here? Under number three display, see right here it says offset, the offset label. On the template, it's defaulted right here at 30, okay? If I just go in and I change that to 15, so it's not offset as much, what does it do? Well, let's take a look here. Ah, where's the number now? It's lower than it was. So we had it offset to 30. I changed it to 15. Now it's lower than where it was. Everybody see that? Okay. Or if I want to say, um, all right, let's put it up higher at 45. Well, I can do that too. And you see now it'll go higher than where it was. Make sense? So you can play with that based on, you know, whatever indicators you might have on your chart. Some of you have added things or taken away things and you can add that onto the chart. Okay. And however you end up doing that, then you can do right click template save as. And then you can save it as, you know, my C's O P O D. Don't change the original template we have in there. Name it your own. That way anything, Specific you have to it, you can go straight to that template and always use it, and it'll always stay offset. Okay, make sense? Okay, just want to cover some of that because we've had some questions about that. All right, so um, let's go back here and let's take a look here. Um, let's see here, John, you asked, so would there have been a trade in both examples? The first being a loss, the other profiting. Um, Yes, that is correct. Or uh, no, John, the that 
first one I showed you, which was, um, oh gosh, the one of them, it would have kept you out and the other one would have got you in. All right. Well, we'll look at some, we'll look at some other examples here real quick. Okay. Um, let's see here. All right, Dinesh says, John, what happened when you have the market make a perfect double top and perfect double bottom? How do you handle this personally? Okay, what he's asking about is, let me see if I can find an example. Okay, let's just say, this might not be the perfect example. Let's say the market comes down, pulls up, and it comes down. What is the rule for a number one? That it has to go a little further, right? Okay, what's the rule for a number two? That it can't go quite as far, right? Dinesh, are you asking about what's the rule when it goes literally pretty much straight to the tick and it's like a perfect double top or bottom? Okay, well, like we talked about the other day, that is not, if it comes to the tick, that is not a power play setup, okay? It's not per the rules, because it doesn't fit a number one or a number two rule, okay? Um, so let me clarify that, it's not a power play. Now, your question is, can you trade it? Well, that's, all I can tell you there is that's not part of the power play rules. It's not a power play, okay? Can you trade them? Are they tradable? Sometimes, yes. Um, I would say to demo trade them and play with them. I personally would only consider taking those trades if they meet the ABC type rules, meaning why would I want to take that trade? Well, it's, let's say there's a level there and it's coming right back to that level and it can't break it. Um, I would have to have a cluster probably in the up close bar personally to want to take it. And the biggest key, well, the level in the cluster are big keys. Like this one here would have turned out to be a decent little trade, right? What do you notice right off the bat here? 98.18 compared to straight to the tick, what? 28.43, right? So you, you see very clearly there's, there's, you know, a big difference there, but we're also comparing you know, a good size trend to there. Well, you know, that's close. What I would want is I would want to make sure that I'm comparing a proximate size trend to a close approximate size trend off of a level with divergence and with a cluster. Does that make sense? What I, what I mean, okay. Well, look, this came back like to the tick and made a double top, and it's a lot less. Let's take it. Yeah, boom. You're comparing this big long trend volume and just a couple quick bars to three bars. You don't do that. Does that make sense, Dinesh? That's like the biggest thing to first look for is that if you decide to take those trades, that's up to you. It is not part of the Apex power play rules. It's not a trade setup, but that's the first thing, right? I'm gonna, I wanna compare similar kind of waves, you know, like, uh, I can try to find one. You, you know what I'm saying there though, right? Okay. So that would be my suggestion to you. Make sure if you're going to take those trades, demo them, but make sure you've got equal type waves, level, chop, cluster, and divergence. Very clear. Okay. 
Um, let's see here. So when will the oscillation detector stop calculating the volume in a trend? Charles, when will the oscillation detector stop calculating the volume in a trend after a second elevator or a second reversal bar? After the second reversal bar, okay, it, it could have multiple elevators, but if they're just one bar elevators, Charles, it won't change it. It's got to have two opposing bars plus go a couple ticks down to, to change. I'm going to show you an example here in just a second, okay? Does that, does that make sense, what I just said, Charles? But let me, let me show you here. Um, let's see. Give me just one quick second here. Let me find that screenshot for you. Let's take a peek at this right here. Uh, actually, Charles, it's right here. Here we go. See, we're OD measured from right here to right here. Okay. Um, 9.55, was that today? Let me see here. What day was this? 9, Let's see here, 9.55. Okay, so see how OD measured from here to here, and it said 18,000. See that, Charles? From here all the way to here. Notice there was a one bar elevator, there was another one, here was another one. Okay, it's going to still keep that measurement no matter how many one bar elevators there are. But when we get a up close bar, up close bar, and just a couple of ticks more, then it's going to start a new measurement going up. Does that help clear it up right there, that, that example right there? Everybody see that? That was a great question, Charles. Everybody see that? How even with multiple elevators, it's still calculated one trend here. Okay, but what did VAD do during this? Now this is, uh, I'm not even trying to show you a setup, a trade setup here. I'm just trying to show you an example of reading the differences, right? VAD showed down and one up, one down, one up, a few down, then an up, and then less, and then up. So if you were just looking at VAD, okay, and you saw, okay, well, let's take a look at this. The market come, comes down, it pulls up, it comes down, it's up, down, up, down, it comes down, up. All right, so you might be feeling like, okay, that's kind of coming out of its trend there. And the market went further on less VAD, right? From here to here, ooh, less VAD. Oh, maybe that's a number one. Oh, maybe I'll get in and take this up and then get hit. Right? Maybe you might have thought that. But VAD made it look like this last push down, you know, was less volume. But what does this overall trend down say? 10K. What does this overall push down say? 18K. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't even necessarily say that was by any means a number one setup, but I'm just saying as an example, if you thought, oh, look, further on less. But when you compare it to OD, this was 10K and this was 18K. This was a lot bigger push down, wasn't it? When you compare the two. OK, so. They're not agreeing. Can I see why they're not agreeing? Yeah, because of the elevators. So I understand why VAD reset and is showing it one way. And I see why this is showing it this way. And therefore, because it's just about the one bars, I'm still seeing overall more volume in the second leg than the first leg, right? So am I looking at this overall market as a went further on less volume? Or do I need to look at the overall picture and say there was more overall volume here in the last leg? Does that example help at all to kind of see a way to look at it and go, okay, they're different and why? 
all right, I don't need to look at it as less volume going further. That makes sense? Okay. All right. Let's check out another one here. This is a, a pretty good example. All right. Did any of you all see this trade or this market yesterday? This chart looked familiar. Were you trading it? Market comes up, pulls down, goes up, right? Makes a new higher high, right here. Makes a new higher high, right? When you look at VAD, what does it look like in this big push here? That we went higher. Okay, guys, don't worry about, well, what is this, a number one or number two? I'm not necessarily trying to talk about power plays and Specifically, we'll, we'll talk about some. I'm trying to help you read the differences here. That makes sense? So what does it look like? It looks like VAD, the market went up on a lot higher VAD, right? Because you see this VAD and then this VAD and then this VAD and this VAD. And, oh, man, the market just gained a lot of steam, didn't it? Oh, boy. Well, why are these VADs resetting in here? Elevator, elevator, elevator. But when you look at the oscillation detector, this overall push to the upside was how much? 44K. This next overall push all the way even to here was how much? Only 22K. This last leg up, this last push up was half the volume of the previous push up wasn't it you see that but because the way that is showing you its view of the market it makes it look like it's the opposite doesn't it do you, do you see the difference there and can you look and say I see why it's different because of the elevators okay right so then you get some choppy stuff going on here um, then it pushes up pushes up right now when it makes this next push up see VAD comes up to here and then VAD comes up to uh, about the same right like it's hard to really tell well uh, because sometimes what will you think? You'll think, well, did it go up on more VAD or did it go up on less VAD? What did it do here? And here again, the numbers can kind of tell you a little more clear of, okay, what it did. All right. So you see that? Does this make sense here where they can show you complete opposites? but then you can look and understand why, okay? It, it, it's gotta be about those elevators, okay? So right here, you have confirming that this here went higher, right? This market went higher on less than this, but that, makes it look like it went higher on more. Right? Okay, let's take another look at something here. Um, let's take a look at right here. Okay, so price went a little further, right? You see it, price went a little further. Got a double top. Oscillation detector showed more volume or less volume? Right, I'm sorry, not up here, down here. See, down here came 1886, okay? And right here came just a little further, you see it, just a little further. Oscillation detector shows 1886 over here. 
and 2417 over here. So it shows that it went on more volume down, right? But VAD shows it as less volume down. Do you see that? Right, so oscillation detector shows more volume down, VAD shows less. So what do we always say, okay? First of all, hey, first thing we look for is do they agree? All right, they agree, we like that, let's go. Second, okay, they don't agree. So let's see if I can clearly see why they don't agree. And normally, the reason we see why they don't agree is what? Elevators, okay, that makes sense. So now, you know, when they don't agree because of elevators, then I want to look at the overall and make a decision. Is there elevators in here on these either of these two pushes down that you can clearly say, okay, I see why they're different? N no. There's no clear reason why they're different, right? So when you can't clearly understand, I mean, yes, they measure from different points, okay? But you don't really have a clear reading, right? So you know, okay, well, I know they're different because of the way they measure. But when they're giving me a different reading without being able to clearly say the different reading is due to the elevator, so let me look at the overall picture, well, then I'm going to probably just stay out. And I might be glad I did because I just hit some chop right there, right? Does that make sense as an example of, okay, they're different and it's not clearly just due to an elevator or two that they're different. I'm going to stay out. Okay. How about, um, how about here? Market comes up, oh, this I think this is the one we were looking at earlier. Yeah, this is the one I was showing you live on the market earlier, wasn't it, right? Of where VAD might've made it look like it went higher on lower, so maybe I wanna get in and take a trade that would immediately kinda of go against me. But I can see that VAD only is reading that way due to that one elevator reset, so when we're talking about an elevator reset, I wanna look at the overall push of the trend. I wanna see, get a clear view of the whole push of the market to be able to compare it to the last push, right? Because I wanna see that overall push go higher on less. So I know that there's exhaustion, there's absorption, we go in the other way, okay? Does that make sense? I know that you guys have been playing with this and, you know, talking about it in the room and, and doing some back and forth. But Lori put together a couple of screenshots for us here just to kind of give you a few examples because some of you are like, well, what are some examples of when they don't agree and how are we going to see it? OK, we went over a few of those. Well, what's an example of when they don't agree, but there's no clear reason why, except they measure different Then I, I want to stay out then if it's not due to, you know, little elevators, I kind of, I, I just want to stay out. Okay. Um, all right. Let me look back at a couple of questions here. I think a couple of them got answered. Um, let's take a peek here. Dinesh says, do we need VAT-A since OD is more effective? Well, it's not that OD is more effective. Okay. It's just a different view. Yes, we definitely need both of them. Okay, you, you definitely want both of them because they're a different measurement. It's not that one is more effective. It's giving you a different view. And when you have them both lining up, that's just double confirmation for you. When they don't both line up and you can clearly see why due to one elevator. Okay, then, okay, what's the overall? You know, but that is also very helpful for well, sometimes even if it does reset due to the elevators, that is also super helpful for seeing the vo the broken up volume of, OK, I can see the overall. From here to here. OK, was seventy six ninety two. Right. 
but here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six bars. Here I've got one, two, three, four, five bars. Say that there was six bars here and six bars here, and you see that the first six bars of that push-up had a certain amount of volume, and the next six had a different. That is still helpful, even though it resets, to, to still kind of show you, you know, where the bigger pushes and smaller pushes are in a long downtrend. It's just a different measurement, okay? Um, yeah, having multiple size charts, absolutely. Yep, you can do that too. So Mike says, otherwise stay out. Well, it's just kind of one, two, three. You'd like to see them both agree. That just helps you feel better about it, right? If they don't agree, if you can clearly see why and it makes sense because of the elevator, then you want to look at the overall picture, right? And if they're not agreeing and you can't clearly see why due to elevator, stay out. Okay? Stay out. Randall says that they don't agree because of elevators, then you should go with VAD. Uh, no. Uh, the opposite of that, Randall. If they don't agree because of the elevator, I'm more likely going to be looking at OD. Because, like in this example here, it looks like it went higher on less volume. But if I took out this one thing right here, if I took out this one down close bar and all this VAD volume kept adding on to here, it would probably get be bigger than this, right? But what I'm looking at is the overall strength of the market that took the market further than here, right? Because I'm not looking at this compared to this for any potential trade. I'm looking at this high compared to this high, the overall. Does that make sense? So keep in mind, I'm not looking at, well, here, and then it just pulled back real quick, and then here, right? I'm looking at this last high here compared to this high here, okay? And if I'm just looking at VAD, and if I'm just looking at this and at VAD, I'm saying, oh, it went higher on less volume. But what's the truth that happened? From here to here was 5,700, right? From here all the way to here was 7,600. There was a bigger push here, so it went further on more. So no, it's, it's kind of the opposite. You see that, Randall? Keep in mind of what you're looking at, especially on a number one type setup. Are we looking for, oh, here's a high, and then one bar down, and then here's the high? No. We're looking at a range bound or choppy market. We want to go look back to that last one or the last, you know, now this had come up and been to a three bars down and then come up. Okay, maybe. Does that, does that make sense, guys? A couple of you are saying, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not measuring here compared to here. I'm measuring this move up compared to where did it make a new high? Up here. Right? So did the market go further here compared to here on more volume or less volume? See, we're comparing here this high to this new high. And if all I look is right here, I say, oh, it went further on less volume. But did it? Did this overall push up compared to this overall push up, what was more? This one. Does that make sense? Johnny, you just said, oh, okay. I'm not comparing here and here. I'm comparing here to there. Make a little more sense? Okay, guys, you're going to come across some of these you know, quite often where they agree, quite often where they don't agree. And if you can clearly see why, and it's just because of a one elevator reset, you want to look at this overall picture, right? 
Because again, it's not just about ABC, one, two, three, it's gotta be bad. It's about, we want the market to go higher on less overall volume, or we want it to go lower with more overall volume, right? It's about the ABC part of we're wanting to read the market. And it's simply just a different way to read it. And again, what's great is those audio alerts for double top and double bottoms that normally give you a quicker audio alert than the cluster. So does that help clear anything up or did that just confuse you more? There's a couple of those few examples there to, to go through of, hey, we like to see them agree. If they don't, and you can clearly see why, look at the overall picture. If you can't see why, stay out. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It's kind of a one, two, three process. Just like the power play setups are one, two, three. I got a cluster alert, cool. What's the condition of the market? Chop trend in a range bound, cool. Is there a level? Cool. Is there a chop? Cool. Is there a cluster, right? Is this VAD or volume meet the rule or not? Great. Does OD and VAD agree? Yes, great. Do they agree? No, and I can see why due to elevators. Okay, so I'm looking at the overall picture. Do they agree? No, and there's no elevators to show why. Stay out. Got it? Okay, well, we'll talk some more. We'll do some more ongoing stuff and some THTs through Oscillator. Continue using it. Um, you know, go through and, uh, you know, keep playing with it. Ask any question. We'll talk about it in the room, okay? Um, hey, yeah, Jack, I got your uh, message from Lori about that. And, uh, um if you guys were on our webinar yesterday, we were talking about Nadex spreads, and I was talking to you about some premium collection spreads, and I believe the message I got, Jack, was that you had tried a premium collection spread, and you got in it here, got out there, and got 109 ticks on it. Was that right? 109? Awesome. Jack put it to use right away after yesterday's, yesterday's webinar. That's, that's awesome stuff. Um, let me see if I can find that here. You sent, here, Lori sent it to me. Let's see if I can find that. Um, yep, buy US Tech 100 at 5898.6, sell to close. Bought 286, payout 392, NQ premium collection trade with spreads 109. Awesome, man. That is great. That's great. Good job, man. Yep, we'll do some more. Uh, we'll do some more on that. That is awesome. I love seeing that. We did a webinar on it yesterday afternoon, and then this morning at uh, 924, I get a message saying the Jack sent to Lori. Say, hey, send this, forward this over to John. I did one of those premium collection, got 109. That is awesome, man. That is great. Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, Jack, I'll put that on the list. We'll do some webinars about uh, trailing stops and initial stops with those uh, premium collection trades. Absolutely. That's good stuff. Eugene says, does double top and bottom always mean a change in direction? Uh, no. And something you have to keep in mind, Eugene, is I mentioned this the other day, but, and you've probably seen it, right? When you're watching this live, okay? Um, market's coming down, right? Makes a low here. It comes up. As the market's coming down right here, right about right here, because you watch those numbers live, right? They're painting white or black, whatever, and you're watching them live, right? When the numbers got right about in here, what would you have gotten, Eugene? you would have gotten an alert saying double bottom on NQ and the numbers would have turned yellow, right? As soon as they get into like the double top range, it doesn't wait till it comes right to the tick. 
like it's a little bit of a range above and below that previous low. So as the market's coming down here and those numbers are printing one way, right in here you get an alert. Double bottom on NQ, the numbers turn yellow, 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 and then when they break the bottom of that zone, they go back to the other color, right? And it goes away. So first of all, keep in mind, guys, you'll see that. You'll get the alerts and it'll turn yellow, but if it keeps going past it, then the yellow goes away, right? Um, but when you look back historically where they actually do plot and stay because the market reverses, um, it'll always be some type of reversal because it has to be at least a two bar reversal for that number to plot there and stay there, right? Does that make sense? Because this is still plotting in the uptrend until this bar closes down and this bar closes down and the market goes a few ticks. Okay, boom. Then that number stays there calculated from here to here and a new number starts printing calculated from here to the current level. So technically, yes, it's always a reversal of at least more than two bars if you, you know, on the ones that plot it historically. Does that, does that make sense? But it does not mean they're always going to be a big move. I mean, you can go back and see, I mean, right here, there's just a few bars down, or you'll see some that are just, you know, right here, a few bars, okay? So, um, see, like here, there was two up close bars, and a little bit more, bam, it plotted there. Two down close bars, and a couple more ticks, bam, it plotted there. See that? It technically plotted right here, because up close bar, up close bar, and a couple ticks, but did it keep going? No, two more down. So don't think that you can just, well, every one it goes, I'm just gonna take it. Well, because you don't know it, it doesn't plot there and stay there until right here. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, so yeah, that's a chop box zone right there. Absolutely, okay. All right, guys, so I hope that helped you a little bit. We'll do some more on it. Definitely keep playing with it. Ask in the room. Put it to use. It's uh, it's good stuff. So um, got some webinars tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do uh, part two of advanced training on order prints, and then we're going to do a little uh, webinar in the afternoon talking a little bit about mentorship stuff, kind of a little update there, and kind of talking about, you know, next week being the last week of uh, open house and how to make the most of that. We want to get you all set and make the most of that uh, that last week. Free access ends on the 13th. Prices go up on the 18th. You want to make sure you get uh, grandfathered in before then. Check out the uh, webinar calendar and uh, get signed up for those webinars. Okay? All right, guys. As always, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for your interaction and uh, your questions back and forth. Um, great stuff. I really appreciate it. And give me a little bit of time. I'll get this recording and the one from earlier up on the site so y'all can check them out. And we will see you tomorrow. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a great one.